Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat 3 Career Mode. Today we go to Bristol Motor Speedway in both the Xfinity Series and in the Cup Series. We had a bit of another surprise driver in the Xfinity car for this episode. It was Austin Hill in our car and he actually started on the pole for us here in the Xfinity Series race. So it was looking really good for him here in our car as he came through turns 1 and turns 2. Getting pretty sideways there making a nice save as he went down the back straightaway. But he would have a really good race and a really good performance for us as he came through turns three and turns four continuing to lead as he came through to lead the first lap and as he came to about the midway point still leading here as he was probably about four to five car lengths ahead of the second place car at this point and he would just continue to lead and dominate this race as he came to the final lap now heading down through turns three and turns four Austin Hill would come through in his first Xfinity start for our team to win in Bristol so a great performance like I said by Austin Hill there in our car certainly could keep him in mind as a future driver for our uh, car when we get to the playoffs maybe so we'll see how that goes and how everything shakes out now as there's that just brilliant trophy there as now it's time to set our sights. so on the cup series race a track that we've had a lot of success at in the past in cup without a win though we qualified on the pole we usually expect to qualify on pole we usually run really good in stage one and two and we can just never seem to put a win together at this track we do have a win here in the Xfinity series back five or so seasons ago so hopefully we can get our first cup win at Bristol here today and as we came to our qualifying lap it was a pretty good one there as we get a little bit sideways at a turn four but we would come across the line with a 16.942 and put the car on the pole here in Bristol so hopefully we can stay here and have a chance to win Hello everyone and welcome to Bristol Motor Speedway in Bristol, Tennessee for the running of the Food City 500. This half mile concrete oval is famous for its high banking stadium like seating and all the beating and banging that goes on between the competitors. In fact, sometimes there are more fireworks during this race than on the 4th of July, but there's no room for hurt feelings or bruised egos today. All that matters to these drivers is winning this race. This is Bristol Motor Speedway, and this is NASCAR Racing on PRN. All right, we're ready to go green here for the Food City 500 at Bristol Motor Speedway. Eric Jones sent to the back after failing optical scanning station multiple times, and Parker Kligerman starting in the back after unapproved body modification during qualifying as we get ready to start on pole. I believe this might be our first pole of the season here in uh, the 24 car now as we're ready to go green in Bristol from P1. The green flag is out, and we are underway here in Bristol. Truex already behind me as we get clear right away as we head down into turns one and turns two and as we come out of turn two getting a little bit sideways there as we head down the back straight away into turn three and that was certainly one of the biggest issues with the handling in this car was it was pretty loose on the exit of the corner now as we come through to complete the first lap leading the first lap here with 29 to go in this first stage Truex right behind me there about a car length or so behind as he gets a good run down the back straight away as we went down towards turn three Logano sitting in that third position at the moment behind Truex and we lead another lap or so uh, in this race and as we came through to uh, lap three continuing to lead as Logano he would move up to P2 and as we came to lap 4 he had ran me down there and he would look to my inside as we get sideways out of turn 2 and that would allow Logano to get clear of me as we went down into turn 3 and turns 4 so certainly not as fast as I thought we were at least with race pace qualifying pace was really good but Boyer he would move up to P3 and he would also look to my inside as we came through on lap 6 now as he gets to my inside to hitting down into turn 3 and turns 4 and certainly looking like we just don't quite have winning pace at the moment as Boyer he would drive by he would also get past Joey Logano as we came through now to lap 8 I decided to make a move to the inside of Logano as, as I was able to hang with him as we battled by, as side by side down the back straight away we would go into turn 3 and we would send it in pretty deep and clear him and take over that second position but we would get passed again by Martin Truex Jr. who had driven his way through the field as we had a bit of a helmet cam up here as we were running P3 at the moment there like I said Truex had passed Logano he had ran me down past me and he was running down Boyer pretty quickly there as we come across the line with 15 to go and at this first stage now is there's trouble behind this 88 of Alex Bowman who goes into the wall and crashes towards the inside he took Daniel Suarez with him and the caution would fly and we would get ready for a restart here from the third position about a little bit late maybe I think we're just past the halfway point here in this first stage is ready to go green once again with Boyer and Truex on the front row as the green flag returns and we are underway here once again in Bristol behind the 14 of Clint Boyer with 12 to go in this first stage Kurt 
Kurt Busch in the number one Monster Energy Chip Ganassi Racing oh, Chevrolet on my outside as we go down into turn three and in turn four we're going to get into the back of the 14 of Boyer there once uh, or just a big mistake on my part not what I meant to do there as Truex he would get clear as we cross the line as we go down into turns one and two Boyer he keeps the lead after I got into him not what I intended to do as we come through down the back straightaway sideways there as we exited turn two as we go down through turn three trying to stick our nose up the inside of the 19 as we exit turn four it seems like we were showing a little bit more speed at this point late in this first stage now as we send it up the inside of the 19 just about clearing him but we're going to give him the room there as we come into turn two Logano he's going to force a three wide as we're in between Truex and Logano now as we come through turn three no room left between myself and Logano and as we come out of turn four he's going to get sideways and he gets into the wall and makes a big save there as we take over second as that was certainly dramatic as we come through turns one and turns two Elliot looking to my inside now as we get sideways on the exit of the corner as we go side by side going through turn three and turns four now clear of the nine of Elliot for a brief amount of time but he's going to try and get back on my inside as we come out of turn four crossing the line hitting eight to go in stage one a dramatic restart here in Bristol now as we come out of turn two though getting into the wall there as we came down the back straightaway allowing Elliot to take over P2 but we would stick with him and drive away from the cars behind as we came to just two to go approaching the white flag now in this first stage just trying to keep Elliot within range as we go into turn three on the back bumper of the nine as we exit turn four Clint Boyer in position to get the stage victory as we cross the line the white flag in stage one is out as we go through turns one and turns two but a car length behind the nine now even closer as we exit turn two heading down on the back straight away for the final time in stage one we're going to send it up the inside of the nine and with a diving move to our teammate now as we exit turn four side by side with Elliot at the line we make contact and we get p3 as Elliot just barely edges us out for a second Clint Boyer wins the stage Clint or uh, Chris Busher actually got p10 so a great result for Busher here in stage one and we would not have to come to pit road so we would just stay out and get ready to restart in the third position with Elliot in second just myself and Elliot the two guys from the Hendrick uh, team in the top 10 after stage one is ready to go green and stage two now as the green flag is out Clint Boyer leads the way alongside the nine of Elliott as we head down towards turns one side by side with Joey Logano who we just got into uh, it with on the last restart now as we come into turn two Logano he would get clear of me as we lose the position as we go down into turn three sending it back up his inside though as we exit turn four just briefly touching neighbor and that was certainly going to hurt my momentum as Austin Dillon he gets to my inside as we go through turns one and turns two and he would clear me as we came out of turn two now down to P5 as we head down the back straightaway going down towards turn three we would send it up the inside now of the three a little bit of a crossover as the smoke from his car and he gets up into the wall for a brief moment as we exit turn four crossing the line side by side with the three of Austin Dillon now as we come through the center of the corner giving the room that he needs now as we come out of turn two Dillon still on my right rear as we go down into turn three but we finally clear him and hold on to that fourth position as we came through to lap 15 we would pass now Joey Logano for third as Chase Elliott he at this point had worked his way up to the first position as Boyer had dropped to P2 and then Truex would come through from behind me and get past me so we would drift back to P4 but the caution would come out once again here in Bristol setting us up for another late race or late stage two restart here as we get ready to go green went with now Elliot leading the race as the green flag is back out at this point there was only three to go in this second stage now as Elliot and Boyer battle side by side as we make a little bit of contact with Truex our former teammate and former rival now as we come out of turn two down the back straight away Logano looking to my inside as we go into turn three making contact with the 22 and into the wall we go there as we come through turn three and turns for a second time in this race that we've made contact with the 22 of Joey Logano this time though that was my fault the first time he drove right into the side of me and Truex and but this time he certainly uh, was not at fault I came down into him but as we were coming through turn three approaching the final lap in the stage you see up ahead Matt DiBenedetto blowing up in front of the field Truex taking over the lead from Chase Elliott as we go down into turns one and turns two DiBenedetto not going to move out of the way as we come through turns one and two setting us up for maybe a dramatic stage finish as we go down into turns three sending it up the inside of these guys now as Elliott he gets clear of DiBenedetto and drives away with the stage victory as we exit turn four side by side with Logano and he edges me out at the line and we get P4 in the second stage.
a great result for us in this second stage and we would have to come to pit road to take two cans of fuel and four tires and we would actually lose a bunch of positions and fall down to p18 as there's a bit of a mixed strategy among the field here so we certainly have some guys that were at the front towards the back but elliot he had still been out front now as the green flag is out and we are underway for the final stage now behind our teammate of alex bowman who was a heavily damaged car there as we're clear of ty Dillon and i immediately jump down to the bottom in front of him knowing how important the inside lane is as we make contact with Eric Jones there as I got into his left rear as we go down the back straightaway moving up into P15 as we go down into turns three and turns four Elliot and Boyer sitting P1 and two Jimmy Johnson our teammate up to P3 as we go down into turns one and turns two sending it up the inside now of Chris Busher in the 37 car as we exit the second corner heading down the back straightaway sitting P14 in front of the 40 of Jamie McMurray now as we continue to quickly click off these positions so we're certainly doing a great job on this restart there as we cross the line hitting 59 to go, making the three wide just about with Austin Dillon and Eric Almarola now Suarez, he's way up on the top, he backs out of it just about as we get sideways down the back straightaway going down into turns three and turns four, we would quickly get up into a top ten position here on this restart and continue passing these a little bit slower cars now as we came to lap 69 looking to the inside of Cody Ware in the 51, now moving up into the sixth position, setting our sights on our former teammate again of Denny Hamlin as we exit turn four he would hold me off for a few laps, but as we came to lap 71 a chance to look to the inside of the 11 of Hamlin as we exit turn four heading down the front straightaway crossing the line and I was thinking about pulling a bit of a slide job on the 11 and we certainly try it there as we come through turns one and two and we clear Hamlin we would run down the two now of Brad Kozlowski as we came through uh, to lap 80 about nine or ten laps later looking to the inside of him as we came down the front straightaway a chance to pull the same move on him that we did Denny Hamlin and we're gonna try it as we go through turns one we do clear Brad Kozlowski for fourth and we would set our sights now on the 48 of Jimmy Johnson and we would run him down but we started to run into lap traffic and that certainly helped me run the 48 down as there was a car on the apron there of Ryan Truex spun out but no caution would come out so the green flag is still out Kyle Larson running me down certainly a bit of a history with him as we just about run into the back of Johnson as we go down into turns three and turns four now stuck behind Michael McDowell, but we're going to go up the middle between Johnson and McDowell as we exit turn four, crossing the line to take over the third position from the 48 of Jimmy Johnson, and then we would set our sights on second place of Chase Elliott, and we would get to him as well as we came through, nursing our way through all of these lap cars. There you see Cody Ware and Ryan Priest side by side. We would get past these two drivers and continue, like I said, to run down Chase Elliott as we came through on lap 94, sending it up the inside of Chase Elliott after we run him down, and as we come into turn four, getting sideways down correct into the 66 and into the wall we go as we go down into turns one and turns two adding damage now to the right side of the car as we exit turn two heading down the back straight away a little bit sideways again as we battle alongside the 48 of Jimmy Johnson as we came through turns three Johnson he would clear me and we would fall in behind him in that fourth position as we came through now to lap 106 Clint Boyer was still leading this race. He was three seconds ahead, so he was in cruise control right now as we came through turns three and turns four. We would get back, though, to the bumper of Jimmy Johnson as we came through on lap 108 now of 125, looking to the inside of the 48 as we come out of turn four, racing him as clean as possible now. As we go into turns one, we're going to try the slide job on the 48, and we make it happen as we come through turns one and turns two, taking the third position back over from the 48 of Jimmy Johnson as we came through turns three and turns four. Now as we came to lap uh, 117 with nine to go chase elliott clint boyer they had driven away and it was really just down to me and jimmy johnson at this point to battle it out for the third position now as we came through turn three on the back of ty dillon just continuing to nurse our way through traffic and as we came to three to go approaching two to go on this race johnson had gotten to my back bumper now as he's about two car lengths behind as we come out of turn four crossing the line two laps remain for clint boyer here in bristol as he tries to pick up the victory now as we exit turn two really dealing with a loose car at this point now obviously we have damage on the right side Side. certainly have banged up this car a little bit in today's episode now as we exit turn four clearing Joey Gates as we come through crossing the line the white flag is out for Clint Boyer Chase Elliott second it's right now a Hendrick two three four at the moment and Alex Bowman he's had a rough day as we come down the back straightaway for the final time here in Bristol going through turn three and turns four I was hoping today we would finally get our first Bristol win after starting a pole but Clint Boyer he comes through to win as we come through to finish in the third position here in Bristol so certainly a great result for us should be enough to take over the points lead as well over Brad Kozlowski is there you see the finishing order on your screen so 300 cars in the top 10 Alex Bowman 
P15, as there was only 14 cars on the lead lap at the end of that race, as we surprisingly stayed green the whole last stage. I was not expecting that to happen. Uh, I would have uh, probably enjoyed some restarts there, but unfortunately, we didn't get that. But Boyer, he picks up win number one on the season, and he is now locked into the playoffs. And I must mention that Reed Sorensen won the Daytona 500, but he is now outside of the top 30 in points, so he is outside of the playoffs right now after Bristol. And as always, if you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Those would all be very, very appreciated. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to watch this episode. In the next one, we go to Richmond, which is a track that we usually can run in the top 10, no problem, but we can never seem to find a way to get a chance at victory. So you never know. We might be able to pull something off at Richmond. Hopefully, that would be nice. But we do take over the points lead over Brad Kozlowski. And there you see Reed Sorensen is now missing. Jimmy Johnson, currently the last car in the playoffs. Suarez out by two. Hopefully, Suarez will get in. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you for watching, everybody. And have yourselves a great day.